and welcome to the EEPROM 9. You should all recognise this. Da -da -da -da, the Husky Hunter. However, da -da -da -da, no, my Husky Hunter hasn't been breeding. I recently got myself an original Mark 1 Hunter. So we'll put its nice little soft case over there. It arrived this morning in the pub. Now this one is in absolutely fantastic condition. Look at look at it. It's been very well looked after, especially compared to the Mark II ones of the larger LCD. Now, as well as showing you this, I also want to discuss a few things which I would normally put in a review and will put them in a review when I get round to actually reviewing this. For those of you who don't know, I do do system review type things, where it's essentially information about a particular machine. There's a playlist if any of you are interested. Now, the seller of this was really good, put it first class post, put batteries in, and it boots up to a custom OS. Now, I know these things came with options, but I didn't realise they came with the options for an entire custom OS. So, it will be interesting to have a look at the ROMs and see if they're different at all in any way. Also, another thing that can be varied to the user's specifications is the keyboards. For example, this keyboard is completely different to this keyboard, which... This one is like your standard sort of husky hunter keyboard layout basically with the standard OS on it and it doesn't have anything particularly unique on it to this particular machine this one does and it was owned by someone called Optimal Software which is some company I don't know whether they're still going I haven't googled it to find out now we're not going to do a teardown in this video, but a teardown will come and it'll be quite interesting to compare it with the internals of the Mark II and see if there's any internal revisions. I'd imagine there'd be a few, but I'm expecting the circuit boards to be pretty much identical. The external cases are all really vary on this and screen size and the keyboard layout in this case. Okay, not the camera, not good. But yes, this has a few options. Uh, you can erase data, which is like nope we can just go back to menu um, three is data input output once again menu go to escape two some some of these are a bit difficult to get out of one job identity escape seems to work though which is good so I now know how to exit out the menus good but yes um, I've been reading through my hunter manual here and been picking up more information as well as that there's one thing that I just can't seem to confirm exactly when this was released I'm hoping that a tear down of the looking at the internals of this and date codes of the chips will help reveal that mystery but interestingly, I've just noticed this on the instructions now. Look at that, 25th of October 1983. Could this be the first bit of true confirmation on exactly when this machine was released? If anyone knows, do feel free to tell because... But that is pretty conclusive evidence there. So it's looking like it's from 1983. It computers.com says 1983 in one part of text then another part 1984 make up your minds and then this model this one and this software was put on here in 1986 or that's the copyright of the software or when they started or something uh, the date according to this thing is the first of the first 1900 so over a hundred years ago basically I haven't figured out how to set the time and date in this particular OS <laughs> configuration it's got your standard comms the keyboard is very easy to use 
actually quite nice, you don't have to worry about the function key. It seems to just go as a control key rather than anything else. Rather nice bit of kit, nice little find. Prices for these. The Mark 1 sells for less than the Mark 2 Hunter. That's what I'm going to name this as a Mark 2, Mark 1. Simple. Uh, I'm not as sure exactly why this is, probably because the Mark 2 has got a larger LCD, but it's still rather interesting nonetheless. The basic price here for one of these seems to be about 20 to 30 quid. You can expect to see some bidders, depending if it's a Mark II, the price is significantly more. So they're not the cheapest machine to get hold of, but they're not the most expensive either. And if you have a love for essentially something that is built to military specifications. I love the design of this. It is built to a spec, not a price point. Just like the Beeb and just like the BBC Bean. I think that's what really makes a machine when it's built to a spec rather than a price point. And that's probably one of the things that makes BBC B so great. It's built to a spec over a price point because once you had the education on board, sorted. Now the interesting thing is, is the original Husky, so there's actually a model below this, it's the original, were released in 1981, which predates uh, the TRS Tandy Radio Shack laptop thing. I can't think of the model number, I'm just flicking to oldcomputers.com as quickly as possible. I I think it came out in 19... let's go to museum, so let's see if we can bring it up. Da, 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 museum... Uh, Tandy, that's who we want. Tandy Radio Show, there we go, TRS-80 Model 100, 1983. That's when the Mark I seems to have come out. But the original Husky is from 1981. I can just confirm that to you. Where is it on here? Husky, 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 husky. Uh, we're going to have to do a search. It doesn't pop up in the standard searches. Husky. There we go. There we go. Because they used to call themselves DVW Microelectronics. The company seems to be non existent these days. And this came out in 1981. So essentially, the TRS-80 Model 100 wasn't the first of its kind, as many people seem to believe. As I can show you here on the display now. As you can see on the date, I can't see it on this display, let's look there, there we go, it's fourth one down, fifth, 1981, and there it is. Uh, they're pretty, these are pretty rare, and I am after one, pretty much. I've decided to, if I'm going to try and collect one specific computer range why not have it be the huskies all the husky models oh, that's not good for my camera but yeah not only is it a rather rare machine the interesting thing is these are normally quite rare but lately over the past few months they've been popping up on ebay Roughly as wriggly as like a ZX80 or Jupiter Race. Probably closer to a Jupiter Race. But normally they're pretty much non existent, so yeah. So they're not an entirely impossible machine to get hold of. 
although getting them outside the UK might be a problem. Ah, uh, there's a few places in Europe I know they sold, but this these weren't really released on a commercial level, so they're not um, amazingly common. It was only really professional institutions that got these, um, such as Optimal Software, which is I do not know this company. I should research it. But I need to leave feedback to the seller because they were very good. Especially since you glued batteries with it as well. And wrapped it up very well. And even put the fragile on the box which was a nice touch. It might be built like a bloody brick. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't need love and care. So yeah, there's my Husky Hunter Mark 1. With non-standard operating system. It'd be interesting to see if there's any way to revert back to the normal operating system. Although I don't want to do that permanently because this custom OS is quite interesting. Anyway, we're running out of time. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this rather interesting informative video on these rather fascinating and quite obscure machines which are quite revolutionary for the time.